sure don't hear Joel seeing these clowns saying that, but they need to, because it's the truth. If something shouldn't be looked at, then don't look at it, because the truth is the longer you linger, then the more you're giving it an opportunity to set up some wrong, something in your heart that's wrong and wicked, wicked can get working in trouble. There's an imagination. The Bible speaks about casting down imaginations and the things that exalt themselves against Christ. Right. See, the real battle, no doubt, is in our minds. And sometimes what we see, if we dwell on it. Now, don't misunderstand me. We have all kinds of stupid things go through our head, and we can even see some stupid stuff. But we don't dwell on it. We don't keep looking at it. We do avert our eyes. We do on purpose not look at somebody if we got to look at their nakedness. And so this is what the Bible is showing us, that this principle, you could call this, in all of God's teachings, this is what you call a statue. This is something established by God before even God gave them commandments to Moses. Mm -hmm. That if something ain't right for you to look at, then you're to avert your eyes, because you keep looking at it, it can, can affect you, because in your heart it's desperately wicked, who can know it? And like Jesus taught us, there's nothing that comes into a man. It's what comes out of his heart that makes him bad. Right. It's not the Playboy magazine that makes me bad. It's what my heart thinks when I look at the Playboy magazine, see? Right. And I dwell on it. It's not that there's anything outside of me that's sinful or wicked that's going to contaminate me. It's what my contaminated heart does to me when I see that thing and want to dwell with that thing and keep looking at that thing. That's the problem. <laughs> See? You got all these people want to legislate morality. You can't legislate morality. You got to get saved and get moral first in your heart. Right. See? Then you'll understand why what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And this is what's wrong with these clowns in the Supreme Court today thinking, well, it's okay. When they said it's okay to murder babies, it was because it was proposed because way back during the time of Aristotle and Plato, they said, and so the Supreme Court said, oh, well, in that case, see, it wasn't built on anything established by law or even what the Bible said, written well after Plato, especially the New Testament, or what Jesus Christ said. This country, our founding fathers and Congress and everything, said was based on the Bible and morality. No, no, the reason we chose to go with Killing babies was, oh, well, in philosophy, the philosopher said, oh, well, in that case, the Supreme Court says, then it's okay to kill babies. And so for the first time, the Supreme Court says, to hell with all the laws and all the common law of England. To hell with all. We're going to go way back before even there was Western law and go by what the philosopher said when life begins. And based on that, they've been killing babies and they're still killing them today by the millions. And you haven't done anything about it. I haven't done anything about it. Except I spoke out against it, and I've even stood in front of the abortion mill and protested it. Because it should be protested. Yes. Because that's wickedness. And so, of course, then in a little while, finally they come around, and now they're saying, well, it's okay for queers to get married. <laughs> so, my buddy who drives bus with me, he was telling me that he's reading in Dear Abby, some woman wrote in there, she says, I'm a lesbian, and I'm married to my les lesbian lover, and uh, I'm going to get a sex change, and I'm going to become a man. Well, what's, isn't that kind of defeating your own purpose of why you're a lesbian to begin with? Amen. <laughs> why do you want to become a man? Why does your lesbian lover want you to be a man? This is screwy. <laughs> right. But this is the Supreme Court today. See, they've lost their basis of what's supposed to be the basis of all the Bible. Right. And what's morally right is right. And there's no civilization outside of Sodom. There was a little city-state once, once called Sodom and Gomorrah. And of course, within that city-state, it was okay to be queer. But there's never been a nation living on a continent that said, oh, we're going to redefine marriage. Marriage has always been a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. so this is how screwy things are today. And so these boys being taught right and knowing right from wrong, unlike the kind of Congress, the Supreme Court today, and Hillary Clinton, God save us. Uh, they said, oh, 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 God, oh, Dad's naked, what? Quick. They grabbed a blanket off the shelf or something, and, and so the two boys held on to that blanket, and they walked backwards and covered up their daddy. Now, 
when Ham had spotted his daddy naked, and Ham had went and told his brothers his daddy was naked, probably he was making a joke out of it. Probably. You know, when we take this thing and think, well, what would it have been like? Well, that's probably what it was. Because again, the boys probably didn't have any occasion to ever see their dad naked. And so, they probably never seen, saw their dad drunk. You gotta remember, Noah was a preacher of righteousness, it says in the book of Hebrews. He was a preacher. He don't go around getting drunk. That's why I like Dr. Ruckman's idea that it very well could be that he got drunk because again, he just didn't know that now that the flood has happened, things get contaminated faster. And so he drank this stuff and got drunk probably accidentally, but he got drunk nevertheless. And so of course he was pretty careless in being naked and not having these clothes on. So these boys out of respect to their father, they turned their faces away and even were walking in on him backwards and dropping that blanket on him so that his dad would at least be covered, their dad would be covered up and he would be laying there showing his nakedness until he'd sober up and, or, and wake up or whatever. And so this is what the Bible's telling us. Verse 24, and Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, so he's become sober-minded. He's now awoke. See, he's not drunk like he once was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he has some sense of what happened to him. Now, it even could be, because again, it's kind of strongly worded there, that Ham, when he had saw that his dad was naked, that he had done something to him. Because he awakes and has some sense of what his younger son had done unto him. Now, again, it could simply mean that he somehow knew that his youngest son had went out there laughing and mocking him and joking about him because he'd saw his father's nakedness. But for sure, when Shem and Ham, the older boys, were aware of it, or the other boys were aware of it, that they, they did not even begin to look at their dad or make fun of him or anything, but they went and averted their eyes and walked in backwards and covered him up. But when he awakes then from his drunkenness and he's now sober and he's aware that his younger son had done something unto him and he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Now again, why would he say, Cursed be Ham's first son Canaan? For sure, the Bible doesn't tell us why. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. But we see that... Now again, I would raise the question. Did God curse Canaan? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, no, God did not curse Canaan. Noah, Noah did. did. <laughs> see, there's a difference if God cursed a man or if your daddy curses you. Amen? Right. And we need to get that straight. See... There's a difference between if God curses somebody and Noah does. Look at Genesis 8.21. The Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every, every living thing as I have done. See, when God does curse a thing, it's still cursed. That's why you got to pray over your food. Half your trouble is you're not even praying. You're just gobbling that crap down. And there's still a curse on it. Everything to do with this earth has been cursed. So that's why Jesus taught us to always pray, especially over our food. Because if you don't lift that curse off of it, you're gobbling her down and no wonder it's going to give you cancer and everything else. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the curse off of it. So we pray over it. Because the Bible says in Timothy, it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Our food is. But now once you've prayed over it, once you've read the Bible over it, now it's going to be cleaner than when you... We're fixing to shovel it down <laughs> before. So it pays to do what the Bible says and lives cautiously and safely in this old crooked, decaying world. 
So for some reason, see, God did not curse Ham or Canaan, but Noah did. See, Noah did. So how much, could, and you should say, well, what's the big deal? What's the big deal is the Ku Klux Klan is very active and alive and well in Michigan, okay? And you can deny it exists, but believe me, it's very, it's, it's very much around. And uh, especially when I was involved with the militia, believe me, they came to me and uh, let me know that, you know, they're around. And, uh, and they have a lot of preachers that have been influenced by them to where they teach that all black people have been cursed by God. And that's why they're black. And so they have trouble figuring out now who was the first black man. Was it Cain? Who killed his brother Abel? And a lot of them want to teach that, but the Bible doesn't back it up. And since they can't really prove that, then they for sure they weren't here. And they say, oh, it must be Canaan. <laughs> must be Ham's son, Canaan, was the first black man. But like I just pointed out to you, but notice, no, it wasn't God that cursed him. It was a fellow that just come off a drunk, named <laughs> Noah that cursed him. So... Right. So see, let's not make the Bible say something it doesn't say. That's all my point is. It's a son that he's already had born. Who knows how old the boy already was even. It's not like somehow, uh oh, he's going to get born now. He's going to come out black. No, no, not at all. So of course, because of this whole scenario, and of course nothing would have happened if he hadn't got drunk. But like I said, well, probably he got drunk innocently. But innocently or on purpose, it pays not to get drunk. Amen? <laughs> walking around half naked. And so because of all this stuff, something happened to him when he's naked. He wakes up and he puts a curse on his grandson Canaan. He said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. But notice it didn't say, uh, Cursed be Canaan. He, shall, he and his children shall be. Notice how it didn't say that. Again, like the Ku Klux Klan preachers want to teach. No. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan, shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. So we see this is the curse that Noah put on his grandson, Canaan. And he pointed out that he, it was his opinion, that it was his position, that Canaan, because of his daddy Ham, should have to be everybody else's servant. Japheth's servant and Shem's servant. And he should be able to be their servant. And though Japheth would be enlarged, uh, that God should enlarge his oldest boy Japheth, uh, Canaan should end up being Shem's servant. And that even Japheth would end up dwelling in the tents of Shem. And so that's just simply saying that of the boys, Shem would become the tent maker. And Japheth would become the greater number of the boys. But that his, if he had his way, Canaan would end up being their servant. The other boys, two boys' servant. That's all that was said here. The curse that Noah pronounced was on Ham's son, Cain. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years. And he died. So that's a good place to stop right there. I had to finish it. All right, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get ready for church here.